welcome to another Quest Digest, where we will be covering this week's Oculus Quest news in under five minutes. Now, I have plenty of Oculus Quest accessories still on my list to review, as well as games, so do subscribe, hit that notification bell to be kept up to date with the latest. All right, ladies, buckle up. It's showtime. This week we saw images of what looks like the love child of the Oculus Quest and Oculus Go. This, what you're seeing here, is apparently supposed to be either the Oculus Quest 2, which I assume would have more power and better performance, or the Oculus Quest Lite, which is similar to the Quest you have now, but perhaps with some minor improvements and probably cheaper to produce, so that Oculus can better meet demand. Which one of these it is, no one actually knows, but it does come from a pretty reliable source, as Walking Cat has been known to release tech images online ahead of their official release dates. So I'm going to go over 12 things I noticed about this headset that's different to the current Quest. Firstly, the strap is clearly different. It's made of this woven fabric type material. It's also wider than the original Quest, which might help distribute weight and make it more comfortable. Number two, instead of using Velcro to adjust the fit around the sides, it looks like there are these buckles here that might be used to adjust the strap. And that brings me on to number three. There's no second audio jack, perhaps to save money. Number four, we have no IPD adjuster to adjust for interpupillary distance. And we seem to have two mics. Not sure exactly what that's for, but it might be for noise cancellation or to create an ambient stereo effect. But if we look inside the headset, we can see this number here, which some have suggested is the IPD adjuster. We also see extra plastic around the eyepieces and nose piece, which will probably prevent light bleed. The facial interface is also made of this smooth plastic-like material, which should be a lot easier to wipe down when compared to the spongy cloth-like material of the original Quest. That being said, the unit is also made out of smooth plastic, unlike the original Quest, which has some cloth material around the sides. Number seven, there's been problems with the original Quest controller in that the battery cover slides off accidentally at times. But with this new design, the placement of the join is a bit different. So could this mean they've actually now fixed this issue? Also, the ring is a bit smaller on this new controller too. And if we take a look at the controller itself, you can see the face of the controller is a lot rounder. And maybe the reason for this is to add this little touchpad thing here. This was something featured on the original Oculus Rift controller where you could rest your thumb and make a fist. Also, the wrist strap seems to be made out of this braided rope-like material, unlike the original Quest, which was a thin plastic loop. And of course, the color. It's white instead of black, which might make it easier to see smudges, fingerprints, and dirt. But being all plastic, it would be easier to wipe down too. The cameras seem to be set at wider angles. Perhaps this gives it a better ability to capture movement. Finally, the USB-C port is at a horizontal angle which will make it easier to attach an Oculus Link cable and run the cable along the length of the headset without having to bend it. Next up, Oculus are rolling out an update which introduced a new way to play together. You can now make a public party voice call for groups to discover, travel and play together in Oculus. With Travel Together, friends in a party can travel to supported experiences together without jumping through multiple menus and waiting for friends to join. They've also made it easier to find your friends who are using an Oculus headset using Facebook. Something interesting I also came across this week was hand tracking in WebVR. You can enable this experimental feature in the Oculus browser. Now there's a couple of steps, but it won't take too long. Now I'll leave a link in the description so you can try this out for yourself. And what I can say is it's like hand tracking, but in a WebVR application. It seemed to work fine for the most part, although I did have a little trouble gripping a couple of sliders, though this could be due to the application rather than the hand tracking feature. Now quickly to the official Oculus Quest store and we see the release of In Death Unchained, a roguelite bow and arrow shooter which is currently sitting on almost 5 stars out of 122 ratings. And this game is very challenging but a lot of fun and will have you coming back time and time again. I have a 5 minute video review of this game which I will link out in the description below if you want to know more. We also have Immerse, which is on about 4.5 stars out of 123 ratings. Immerse gives you access to multiple computer screens at once. This is a free app to get your Mac, 
PC or Linux computer in VR so you can have up to five virtual screens with no extra hardware. You can do your work solo for free or upgrade your experience via a monthly subscription to collaborate and whiteboard with others. Now we're finished by jumping onto SideQuest and two games I've reviewed before, Escape Legacy and Rest in Pieces, both fantastic games. You can find my reviews linked in the description below where they've received updates for Escape Legacy, you now able to move by teleporting and for Rest in Pieces, there's been fixed graphics texture and color grading issues. One game that caught my eye this week was Titan's Rampage, where you play the role of a Titan and have to just smash your way through different kingdoms from medieval kingdoms to futuristic sci-fi kingdoms. We also have Project Resonance, an adventure puzzle game where you play the role of a private investigator tasked with finding a missing archaeologist. As you approach the truth, strange phenomena begin to be revealed. Next up is RD's Carnival Shooter. Now this is a retro inspired shooting game where you plug in the cartridge and get to play one of two main games. One is a duck hunt inspired shooter and the other is styled like a carnival game where you have to shoot the various targets that go by. And finally we have VR Aim Trainer which will set you back $7.99 US dollars. Now this game provides a highly customizable experience where you get to test your shooting skills and compete with other people via a leaderboard allowing you to gauge your skill level and climb the ranks. Well we've gone a bit over 5 minutes but that's it from me for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time.